This video is kind of going to be two videos in one, really. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the Pyrefl syntax highlighting that's new in 3.14. And the second thing is the new color theming support. Now, I don't think I could have talked about either of these features separately in their own video, but they're both really cool. And thankfully, they're both heavily related. So I thought I'd bring them together into one. Now, both of these are really, really nice quality of life features, and both have been requested pretty much since Pyrepool came to be. So it's really nice to see them come into 3.14. And while the color theming support specifically is experimental for now, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes in future releases. Of course, if you like this video at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But without any further ado, let's see these pretty colors in action. For those that don't know, in Python 3.13, there was a new interactive interpreter called Pyrepl. It replaced the old one. I don't know what it was called. Not sure it even had a name, but it came with all these extra features like uh, colorization, uh, better pasting support, multi-line editing support, things like that. And in 3.14, they've now added syntax highlighting uh, live in the interpreter. So if we bring the console up and load the interpreter like that, uh, so this is 3.14.0 beta 1. It has actually been released now. Whoop, whoop. Released a day late, which is unfortunate, but never mind. We still have a color prompt. So if you start typing something like hello world, we see that it's colored in green. If we do a sum with some numbers, it's colored in yellow. If we create a function, uh, just func, I guess, um, and then return on one and then call that. We see that some keywords like def and return are bold blue, function names are bold white. We now have all these colors and it's it's so much more readable like this. I realized I use IO Mirage um, as my theme uh, for my editor and I, I realized a long time ago how completely and totally dependent I had become on the colors in that theme. So seeing syntax highlighting like this in the REPL is really nice from a readability perspective. It's also smart enough to be able to detect uh, whether to color soft keywords or not. So soft keywords, for those that don't know, are tokens that can be used as uh, variable names or keywords like match, case, type, and then the underscore is apparently listed as one. I don't know why. Um, but when 3.10, when pattern matching was implemented, they used the match keyword to say that it was a match statement. Obviously, especially people using regex expressions a lot, match was a very common variable name and that would have broken code for a lot of people. So they made it a soft keyword where it became a keyword if it was used in the right way. Uh, so if I just have like X equals one, for example, if I were to say match equals two, it would just see it as a normal variable name. But if I were to then do match x, it now sees that this variable is here and realizes, oh, okay, this is being used as a match statement. Same with case, if I were to say case one, it does exactly the same thing here, where it's able to see, once I put this one here, that, oh, I'm being used as a case statement, I need to be colorized. So it's really nice that it can do that as well. Of course, there are people like me that really do like their colors, but there are people that don't as well, and they have the option, well, it's the same option as all the others. You can use the Python colors environment variable to turn it all off. And when I say all off, I do mean all off, because you don't get your um, uh, prompt colors, you don't get your traceback colors, and you don't get your uh, syntax highlighting colors either. So if you really don't like the colors for whatever reason, you can turn them off by using the Python colors environment variable, either in line like I have here, or exported in some sort of shell configuration if you want to make it a bit more permanent. There's of course a chance that you're in this kind of middle ground where you do like the coloring, but you don't like the colors themselves and you would prefer to be able to change them. Now in 3.14, there is experimental support and I will emphasize that it is experimental to change the color themes in the interpreter, in your tracebacks, as well as in argpass and something else. I forget what it is exactly. We can have a look, it's not too difficult to find out. Uh, to do that, we need to write a Python script. So we're gonna uh, do one over here and we're gonna call it startup.py for now. And in startup.py, we're gonna import from colorize uh, ANSI colors, default theme, and set theme. And this colorizes the API that is experimental. You can tell by the fact that it has an underscore at the start, meaning it's not documented and it's not covered by Python's deprecation policy. So this could break at any time, though it's expected it's not going to break super soon. Um, and even if it does break, uh, there are fallbacks when launching scripts and interpreters. So it will just kind of not color your terminal. 
Uh, we can quickly look in here actually and we can see what the other thing was. So you have your, so yeah, so these are the different colors. These are built in, they're just strings so you can use whatever colors you want. Uh, there are some instructions here. Theme sections, we'll get to these. So syntax, trace back, unit test, that was the other thing. And then R passes up here. So you can change these things individually. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change the prompt, so the three little chevrons at the start, uh, to be blue. And we're gonna sort the colors of numbers and strings, because that sounds fun. And we're also gonna change the uh, one of the colors in the trace back to be red, because that seems a bit more dangerous. So to do that, we need to create these theme sections. So we are kind of blitz past them because I didn't really want to spoil things, but there are theme sections here uh, where you can set colors to, and you have arg pass, syntax, trace back, and then unit test theme sections. And then a theme is comprised of these theme sections. And we need to uh, customize the sections individually and then customize the theme, but we only need to supply what we actually want to change. So we can use defaults for everything else. So if we say syntax equals uh, default theme, oops, I don't know what I've done there. I always hit that button and I never know what that button actually is. So if anyone does know, let me know. Uh, syntax and then copy with, and we can pass uh, different things in here to change certain colors. So we can say the prompt, we want to be ANSI colors dot bold blue, and then our numbers, we want to be uh, green, the color of strings, and then strings, we want to be uh, ANSI colors dot yellow, like that. And then in our trace back, we want to use the default theme again, and then we want to set the trace back, copy with, and we want to set the type to ANSI colors dot bold red. And this will highlight what, well, you'll see what it highlights when we do it, but it will highlight the um, the exception name in the trace back. And to actually set this theme, we do set theme and default theme dot copy with uh, syntax equals syntax and then trace back equals trace back. And this now copies the default theme, but it applies these custom theme sections that we've created here, which in turn are um, derivatives of the sections from the default theme. And we can now apply this in two ways. The first way is by using the Python startup. So the Python startup is something that's been around for a long time. And actually the second way has been as well. Uh, there's nothing new in how all this is happening. Um, and the, uh, but the Python startup relies on passing a script to a an environment variable. And you can do that in line or you can export it. I'm just gonna do it in line for ease. And that's this Python startup equals, and then I've got to get my um, things from here. So it'd be programs, and then it'd be Cabra slash tutorial slash awesome slash pyrepl colors. It's not going to do that. Pyrepl colors, there we go. And then startup. And then if we set pi here, we see that we have our bold prompt. And if we start typing a string, we see that this is a yellow string. I spelled yellow wrong, but I can't be asked to go back and correct it. And then we have green numbers as well. How cool is that? And then we have our colorized theme. But um, that doesn't work for scripts. It works for the interpreter, but if we were to do, if we do the same thing, but then do pi dash C and then one divided by zero, we still have the old traceback color type. Um, so it works for the interpreter, but not for scripts. If you want to make it work for scripts, so have it kind of global to your installation, you need to uh, put your code in a site customize.py module where your standard library modules live. Now this is very variable depending on whether or not you're using a virtual environment, whether or not you're using Windows or Mac OS or, or Linux. I'm going to show you how to do it in a virtual environment today as I feel like this is probably the most common place, but you'll need to look up uh, wherever the, the standard library modules for your Python version are, if you want to put it with them. Not site packages, unless you're in a venv. It gets confusing. But in a virtual environment, you come into here.venv and then lib Python 3.14 and you go into site packages. We can, I'm actually going to copy this over. We can move that in there like that, and then we need to call it site customize.py. Uh, again, if you have a system installed, it does not go in your site packages. It goes wherever all the standard library modules are. 
Um, I can't remember exactly where that is. Uh, but now, if we run that, it will uh, do the same thing. So we could just run pi, and we have our uh, three chevrons here, and then we have our yellow strings, and then we have our green numbers. But if we exit this, and we do pi dash c one divided by one divided by zero, we have our red error type, which is uh, not what we had before. It was purple before, and it is now red. And I think this kind of looks a little bit better. <laughs> Actually, um, it, it, it makes it seem a little bit more like something has actually gone wrong. So obviously this is all experimental, it's undocumented, um, it can change at any time, and it's mainly just here to play around with for now until a proper solution has been thought up after actually thinking about it and not just rushing in with some configuration files and then, then stuck with. So I can understand why they've done it like they've done it. If you know what you're doing, it's perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with it. Um, but yeah, this video kind of shows you how to go about doing it. I am working at the moment on a project that can kind of do all this for you to go on the Python package index. I want to call it PyTheme, but the name's already taken and I'm going to try and get it off the person that has it. And that can take upwards of six weeks, um, which is really annoying. But I'll leave the, the actual project in the description. I doubt by the time this video goes live, it will be that well implemented um, or even implemented at all. Uh, but I'm going to keep working on that because I think it'll be a fun project to do. So if you're looking for an easier way, then consider checking that out as well, or at least following its progress. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to say about the syntax highlighting and a the color theming. Uh, for now, if you have any questions, then by all means, do leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to like it and consider subscribing if you want to see more like it. If you want to see all the other videos I've done on 3.14, including the overview video of all the new features, then you can click on the Python 3.14 playlist. Over the next few weeks, we'll be talking about uh, extra 3.14 features. So template strings will be coming and there will be um, a roundup of all the exception handling improvements of which there's actually been quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I'll see you for that.